Hi and welcome back to my channel. It's been about nine months since I last checked in and I apologize for the great length in between videos, but really I just started living my life and you, making YouTube videos just didn't really fit into it at that point. If you've been following my channel, you know the stuff I went through last year and to be able to say I was just living my life is um, really great news and exciting news. So I hope you forgive me for that. I thought it was about time to do a check-in, let you know how I've been doing, and then I'm gonna dive into the main topic of this video, which is my fake boob. So the biggest change you've probably noticed is that I dyed my hair blonde. It's something that I've always wanted to try, but just never had the guts or the patience to do it. And I figured, you know what? My hair's super short. Um, I just wanna try it. So I went in. <laughs> I got uh, I got it trimmed and I went blonde so it was a really fun experience at that time you know my hair was still pretty short um, I wasn't really feeling great about it or how I looked so going in and getting the whole experience the makeover experience was really something that like warmed my heart made me feel good and um, you know I can say I got a check mark on my bucket list of you know always wanted to try blonde hair so obviously I've not been keeping up with it <laughs> as my roots show. Um, so I think long term, blonde's not for me. I just don't have the, you know, the drive to go out and keep up with it. So not going to be permanent. But in the meantime, got some nice photos, documented. I was blonde once, once upon a time. I went back to work in January of 2022, so I did take some additional time off after I finished radiation treatments in order to just really work on myself and just to just try and feel a little bit better. But come January, I was raring to go. I wanted to get back to my regular life and going back to work uh, was a big part of that. Work was a really big part of my life and being able to go and feel useful and just have something to do each day really helped with my with my mental health and I'm enjoying it and I'm actually now back at the office which is a big step because you know all of us we had to stay home during COVID in 2020 then 2021 was still COVID and I had to stay home because of cancer so having the ability to like go into the office was kind of like that big shake up and that big mental um, adjustment that really helped to um, you know, to signify that things are different now. So really appreciative that I could go back to my job and that, um, you know, it's been, it's been a good experience. Everyone's been super supportive and um, I feel useful, which is really great. So back at work, thumbs up. The other big thing that I took on post-treatment is uh, fitness. I started going to the gym in November late November of uh, 2021. At that point, you know, my feet were still really rough from the neuropathy. Walking was difficult. Wearing shoes, let alone socks, was still quite uncomfortable and at times really painful for me. But I know that fitness and health is a really, really key thing to anybody's lifestyle, but especially with cancer reoccurrence. So I felt the need to really shake things up and go to the gym. I got a trainer. I actually have a little video I took back then um, of my first time going to the gym. Um, so I'll show you a little snippet of that right now. Um, so that's November of 2021. So I joined a gym. Um, I have now done my first official gym workout. My body is like so many levels below <laughs> what I even was before. Um, I need to really focus on how I'm approaching this mentally and you know what today I showed up this is a step that I'm taking to try and reclaim my body um, to try and rebuild some strength some stability some balance um, all things that I lost thanks to chemo <laughs> and obviously surgery has created some um, limitations in my shoulder, chest, arm uh, that I'll need to work on. A friend of mine actually said something today that was um, that made me laugh and I, I really like it so credit to you Lulu but um, uh, today's the first day towards getting my revenge body <laughs> so um, yeah the revenge body on the big C so yeah 
working on that. I started with my trainer the following week and, you know, seriously, haven't looked back. It was a great experience. I'm still working with her actually, so it's been a great experience and she has been super supportive and really helping me with my goals of, of building strength back. Uh, it was definitely, you know, in the past when I've tried to like go to the gym and work out and stuff, it's all been about losing weight and everything where this, we came in with a really concrete, I'm here to build strength back because chemo destroyed my body. Uh, walking on the treadmill for five minutes was very difficult for me with the feet and just my stamina. So I started working with the trainer three times a week. Eventually we went down to two times a week, but over this time, I have lost nearly 15 pounds, which is a great side effect of doing strength training. And I really went from someone who couldn't even like really stand on one foot to doing, um, doing deadlifts on one leg. So that just sort of tells you the momentum and the, the building of strength that, um, that's happened over the last six months with her. So my gym actually did a profile on me, which is posted on a board in my gym about my transformation of starting in December of 2021 up until July of 2022. And just showing like the remarkable results, um, just visually, let alone the stuff internally for me. So the gym is something that I really want to continue on through my life um, because like I said, fitness is a big deal uh, for cancer reoccurrence and just having a healthy lifestyle is, you know, is something that I can do in order to move towards hopefully never getting cancer again. So that's basically a quick check-in on how things have been going um, in my life uh, from a cancer standpoint, still cancer free, as far as I know, <laughs> still cancer free. Um, I have had a mammogram this year. I have had a follow-up appointment with my oncologist. I see my radiation oncologist next week, so they're just going to check out the, uh, the site where I was radiated <laughs> and make sure that everything looks good, but from what I can tell, everything looks really good. And then I have my second follow-up with the oncologist at the end of the month, so you know things are progressing uh, quite nicely. I don't have any specific complaints for her any of them to flag. So that's a really good sign um, because big part of prevention of reoccurrence is being just really in tune with your body so that you can flag when something doesn't feel right. Um, I'm not going to be going in and being, you know, scanned every year. Um, so it's really important to, like I said, be attuned with how my body feels and what doesn't feel right. And then, you know, just having the confidence to flag that with the doctor and not be like, oh, I'm being dramatic or anything like that. Like, I don't play around now. I will flag it for a doctor if I am worried. So that's kind of what's happening on the health front. Um, so yeah. Anyways, we can jump into the main focus of this video now, which is to talk about something that I didn't even know was an option. So I had my surgery just over a year ago where I had a right-sided mastectomy. So as you can see right now, flat on one side, boob on the other. Now my surgeon had recommended that for reconstruction, which is my plan, that waiting at least a year or two, that gives time for things to settle down after radiation treatment, for the surgical site to heal. Um, just, you know, that was his recommendation. But that's a long time and you know body image even just like I'm wearing a sports bra here not having anything filling out this tugs in uncomfortable ways so even trying to wear a bra when I'm you know just got one boob is quite uncomfortable but you know what are you gonna do well apparently you can get a prosthetic now, this is something that my massage therapist, the one who does the lymphatic drainage for me, had brought up to me at one point about like, if you get a prosthetic, you know, we can make sure to focus on these areas because you're gonna be overcompensating for the weight distribution and everything. And I'm like, prosthetic? You can get a prosthetic? And that opened a whole new door there. So in December, I made an appointment at a mastectomy boutique uh, that is 
well not in my area but close by and I went in for an assessment uh, where they did measurements they brought out various different types of prosthetics to try as well as bras to try out so I'm going to show you this is my prosthetic so it comes in this lovely carrying case here for storage and this is what it looks like Boop. it's very smooth it's very um, flexible and kind of like jiggly which is nice and um, yeah so we tried on a bunch of different styles and this is the style I landed on you'll notice there it, it tries to have a little nipple it's cute it doesn't show out though so anyways um, so this is the one that we decided on based on my sizing contours etc and then she had me try on a bunch of bras but suggested that I only purchase one bra at that time so that I can get used to feeling what it feels like to be wearing it. And then after I spent a couple weeks with that bra and the prosthetic, which I will be honest, I didn't wear it every day. It definitely took time to get used to the feel of it there and the change in weight. It, I definitely was feeling some discomfort in my shoulder, some cutting on the side, that kind of thing. So I didn't wear it every single day, but I did try to wear it frequently so that I could get a feel for it. Um, so then I went back and I bought a whole bunch of other bras uh, to go with it. And um, yeah, now when I go out, I wear this almost every day. There are certain days where I'm just like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so I will wear the sports bra here. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to show you what some of the bras are, some of the, some of the irritants of it, um, but also just how good it looks in regular clothing, uh, regular to an extent. Obviously this shirt here that I'm wearing right now, this blue one, I could not wear this just with the prosthetic and the bra, but I will show you an accessory that I got as well that helps with a little bit more lower cut shirts so I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the bras and um, and I'm gonna show you it with some of my regular clothes on so you can get an idea of how natural this prosthetic can actually look look mom I'm on YouTube in my bra so this is the first bra that I got it's definitely the most comfortable out of all of the ones that I got this is the prosthetic side this is the natural side so you can see it's got pretty good coverage it is definitely, all of the bras have very like hardy straps. The, uh, the backs are very, you know, have a lot of latches. And that's because in order to hold the prosthetic on, you need to have it really tight against you. So that is one thing with these bras that, you know, around this area here, it can get a little constricting. Um, but yeah, this is what this one looks like. You can see when I bend over, it starts to make a little bit of a pocket here, which is what we need to be careful about because, you know, if you reach over for something, then suddenly everyone can see down your shirt and you see the surgical area. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So I'm gonna put a shirt on and you can see how this looks like just with a regular t-shirt. So really, no one would notice the difference. No one would be like, hey, that chick's wearing a fake boob uh, when they just see me like this. Now, if you were actually to feel it, it does have a very significant different feeling. Um, you know, I think my husband said, it's cold, was <laughs> when I made him feel it. Um, so yeah, you can definitely feel the difference, but from a viewpoint, I think that it's, it's pretty unnoticeable. So this is a t-shirt. I purchased three other bras in addition to the purple one, uh, which was the main one that I purchased and the most comfortable I have. So I got, you know, cause every girl needs a nude colored bra. So I got a nude colored bra. Um, all of the bras have these little pockets here that the prosthetic goes into. And you know, there's one on each side. So depending on whether you're getting a prosthetic for left or right or both, 
serves all of that. So I've got this natural colored one nude for me. Um, so this one here is it, it is a lot of uh, like a thinner material and if it gets a little chilly I get a single nipple <laughs> going. So that's one thing that can be a little silly when I notice it but you can actually get little pads that you can you know put in there in order to dampen the uh, the nipple so that it's not like one nipple and nothing. Um, this one I do find it cuts me along here uh, this area so long term it's not the most comfortable like it's not something I like to wear all day it's more when you know maybe I'm wearing um, you know something that's sheer sort of <laughs> or you know a dress or something like that but I do definitely have to be careful with you know what I'm wearing because like I said if you bend over like you can't see anything right now but I'll show you in a sec when I wear like that blue shirt I was wearing and I bend over you're gonna see everything so I did get something to help with that the other bra I got is a black one because you know a nude one a black one sexy colored one that's all you need so again this is a very thick strapped thick lots of lots of hooks and everything which was very interesting shortly after my surgery you know like to be trying to put that uh, those latches on I had a, a I didn't have the range of motion that I have now so that was a little difficult and sometimes had to get help but this one is very tight around here so again it's not something I feel comfortable wearing for extended periods of time throughout the day this is definitely get home from work bra comes off enjoying my evening so that's that one and then Technically, any of these bras I could wear when I'm going to the gym, but you know, I wanted something that said, you know, sports kind of thing. So I got this sports bra. Now I'm going to put this on because I do want to show you something, even though I really like this one um, and I do wear it to the gym like every time. Um, I do want to just show you something that, uh, that is a little bit annoying. Um, and so this was definitely not going to be like a all day kind of bra. Okay, so this is the sports bra. So I've just put it on, so it's, uh, you know, it's secure, it's where it's all supposed to be, but by the end of my workout, this area here has shifted so far up that I end up getting this part pushing up, um, which can be rather un uncomfortable and unsightly. Um, can't replicate it, <laughs> it seems, at the moment, but you can see how it's, sort of like sitting up high on there and it peeks through so definitely not one of those gym girls who wear you know a sports bra to work out um, and only a sports bra um, and definitely not wearing anything low cut um, I went on multiple trips to the store to try and find workout clothes that you know stay high um, because you know when you're bent over as you can see there you're getting a view down into my non-existent boob area. So I tend to wear the, you know, high up um, shirts that will not expose that. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I said, this part starts to ride up, which can be a little uncomfortable, but I do really like it. I think it's cute and I feel cute when I'm wearing this one. Um, also, I just feel like it supports me a little bit better when I'm working out. So that is my go-to workout one. And I like it. So those are the bras that I got. I will show you some of the accessories that are helpful for, um, some of the accessories that are helpful for covering up this area here. So if I wanted to wear a shirt that's a little lower cut, but I don't wanna like show everyone my gaping hole, of a space where my breast used to be, then I can use this accessory. Okay, so this is the accessory I was talking about. It goes over like this. And then latches on to your strap to anchor it in place. So you do that on both sides. Now it creates like a little camisole kind of like appearance, I think it is. 
think that's what it's called. So then you can put on your, your you know, your lower scoop necks or your v-necks. I just put that in really high. I guess you would probably have it a bit lower, but so it creates that layered effect. So now when I bend over, you're not seeing down the shirt. So that can make it so that you're not throwing out a whole bunch of your wardrobe that uh, you don't feel comfortable wearing anymore because you don't want people looking down your shirt. So I got this in white and I got it in black. And um, yeah, like I said, can add it onto any of your lower cut shirts that, you know, I would not be able to wear this with uh, just the bra um, unless I was comfortable just showing everyone everything. So handy little accessory, um, definitely worth it. And the last thing I got, which I'm not going to pull out right now because it's like a whole thing to get it on, but is I got myself a bathing suit. Uh, just keeping up with trying to maintain like a fitness routine. I thought swimming would be a really good way. Uh, unfortunately, they only just recently opened the swimming pool again in my building after it's been closed for years. Um, so I haven't made it down there yet, but I have the swimsuit. The prosthetic goes right into that and you're good to go. So yeah. That's uh, basically a summary of what I purchased uh, in addition to uh, the prosthetic, which I think looks pretty good. It was definitely a great thing to find that I could get a prosthetic. Uh, it is a self-esteem booster. Like I, I felt normal. I didn't feel like I stood out um, where people would be like, oh, something happened to her kind of thing. So uh, even though, like I said, it does at times get a little uncomfortable. Um, not gonna lie, sometimes when I'm wearing it every single day, there is a bit of like chafing on my surgical area, which is uncomfortable. Uh, can be, I wouldn't say painful, but irritating. Um, so there are times where I just like, I don't wanna wear it, um, but then it kind of leaves this side just hanging and that, uh, that can be uncomfortable in its own way. Um, but yeah, prosthetic, it is an option. If you're not getting reconstruction at all, or if you're delaying your reconstruction like I am, this is something that is simple to get, simple to wear, and it just it makes you feel whole again <laughs> if, that's, if that's what you need. Uh, the other great thing is that between my insurance through my work and the government in Ontario, the cost of the prosthetic was completely covered, so I wasn't out of pocket on the prosthetic. It was a process where I had to like send in paperwork and they reimbursed me for it, but initially, you know, I paid for it, but then my insurance covered the half of it and then the Ontario government paid the other half. So, you know, you can't beat free. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, the story of my fake boob. <laughs> and hopefully that this is helpful to someone who didn't know that this was an option for them and maybe now you can look into it. There's so many different options for prosthetics as well. This is just like a, you know, an entry level. If this is something that, you know, you're thinking long-term life plan for, where you want a prosthetic, you don't want to do reconstruction surgery at all, then, you know, there are definitely more expensive, but more, um, you know, real looking and ones that they can actually fit to your body specifically. So I think maybe the level of comfort when wearing it would be higher with something that's custom made for you. But in the meantime, until I go for my reconstruction, this is, this is definitely a wonderful option and I feel good about it. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful, informative, and maybe inspired you to look into it for yourself. Uh, it was definitely worth the money um, the bras aren't cheap, <laughs> but bras are never really cheap. And if they are cheap, then they're cheap, you know? Um, so <laughs> uh, definitely an investment that was worth it. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. I do keep an eye on that and I will respond to you. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone is doing well. Again, sorry it took so long to do an update, but I hope that this was, you know, satisfying. And, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll keep going because there are, you know, there's always something going on. So anyways, thank you again for watching. If you like, like the video, subscribe, and um, I will see you next time whenever that is.
Bye.